Kia ora tato. In this video we'll look at electron spin, which is uh, an extension of what we were doing with electron configurations. So this is a diagram that shows the orbitals within subshells. So if we remember we've got subshells, uh, we've got the 1s subshell, the 2s subshell, 2p, 3s, 3p, and then we'd have 4s in there, but I've just skipped that, 3d. So Within each subshell, there's a certain number of orbitals. So within every S subshell, there is one orbital. And that orbital can have two times electrons. Every electron can have two, uh, sorry, every orbital can have two electrons. And it, so it doesn't matter about the energy level, it just matters about which subshell it is that determines the number of orbitals that something has. So every 2S, 3S, 1S, they all contain one orbital, which can contain two electrons. Every P subshell will contain three orbitals which contain two electrons each. So that means there's six electrons total that can go into um, a P subshell. So let's draw um, the electron configuration showing electron spin uh, going through from hydrogen to neon. So I think it's best for me to just show you as I'm doing this first and then I'll explain the rules um, in a bit. Sorry, I'm just moving this around, not meaning to. Um, okay, so let's take hydrogen. So we'll go 1s. Hydrogen is going to have one electron in the first subshell. And we draw that with an arrow. It can be going up or it could be going down. It doesn't actually matter. But the next important thing is that when we've got helium, we're going to add another electron. And the next electron has to be going in the opposite direction. So we've used up the 1s electron. Then we can go 2s. Um, sorry, the 1s uh, subshell, so 2s would be the next one. So for lithium, we will add one more electron there, and then beryllium, we add another electron. So notice that we're going in opposite directions when we're adding the next electrons in. And then for the 2p, we're going to have three orbitals. So these lines here are representing each of these orbitals. So this one is that one there, this one is that one there, and then these three those ones there. So when we're filling these up, so from boron we're going to put one uh, one electron there, then carbon, instead of going straight into the same orbital, we're going to go into the next orbital with the same direction of spin, and then nitrogen we're going to do the same again. So it's not until we get to oxygen that we're going to start adding, and fluorine that we're going to start adding electrons into the same orbitals. So let's have a look at what the rules are that state how we would do this. So this would be the electron configuration showing the electron spin of neon. So the rules are that we need to fill from the lowest energy level first. Uh, that's what we already know. We're going from 1s to 2s to 2p. We're not going the other way around. Then each orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons with opposite spin. So that's us showing that we do one electron first with one spin and then the other electron showing the other spin. Each orbital within a subshell will be filled with one electron each first. Um, each orbital is singularly occupied, each singularly occupied orbital will have the same spin um, with two ends apparently. So that was when I was going through here. Um, I'll just rub that out and start again. So that's that's just us showing that we've got, first of all, we fill each orbital with the same spin. So doing it like that is correct. If I was to, even if I was filling one orbital at a time, if I did them with opposite spins like this, that would not be correct. They all need to be going in the same direction. Um, let's draw that in. Yeah, like that. Um, okay, so let's do another example of um, an atom with more electrons. How about we take titanium? So one way that we can show this as well is more visually. So if we've got titanium, we can we can show the the orbitals according to how much energy um, they've got, e for energy. Uh, so we would start with the 1s down here. So titanium is going to have that filled up. Then we would have the 2s. So we're slowly increasing in energy. 2s, we're going to have two electrons going there. Um, then we've got 2p. One, two, three, and we fill them up one at a time, like that. Uh, three S, it's going to have two electrons in it. Um, 
3p. Sorry, I can move this up a bit so we're actually going with the diagram. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And at this stage, we've made it to argon, which we remember was our, our way of doing the shorthand of electron configurations. Um, then the next energy level, and because we're showing this on um, to show the, the amount of energy that each energy level has, the next highest one is not the 3d, it's the 4s. So we then fill up the 4s with two electrons, and then we'll have the 3d just above that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which has got two more electrons to fill, because we've got we're up to here now, so two more electrons there, one, and they need to be in different orbitals, but with the same spin. So that's how we do electron spin. This will become relevant a little bit later on in the topic. Um, there's not too much practice that can be done, and you won't be directly tested on it, but it is something that you need to know. So uh, I would recommend just taking a couple of these atoms and practicing drawing the electron spin of them, making sure that you um, are doing the, the in the final subshell, you're filling each orbital uh, one at a time with each electron having the same spin. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.